Five days ago, when I heard the news that of the death of Nelson Mandela, which swept the airwaves, I was stunned and confused. Stunned not by the loss of a Nobel Prize winning humanitarian, but confused by the fact that I had thought I remember he had died over five months ago from um, a serious lung infection and that he had died in a hospital in Pretoria. So I decided to check this out for my own satisfaction and now I'm going to share with you what I found. Here in this article, Nelson Mandela dies at age 94. Not published December 5th, but look at the date, June 27th, 2013. Now, as the article goes on to say, down below here on June 26, 2013, Nelson Mandela was taken off life support after his condition deteriorated further. Sources have said that the 94-year-old Mandela died last night after his life support was shut down. The grandson of Nelson Mandela angrily left the meeting over a disagreement of where the former president was to be buried. Mandela's daughter, who was seen wearing a red blanket, and I'll explain that later, and other family members that were at the grave site, it has been reported that the red blanket is a part of a tribal ceremony of the Zosha. According to the Zosha custom, the blanket is used when a family member has died. Sources have confirmed that Nelson Mandela died last night after his life support was shut down and the respected iconic humanitarian has died at age 94. Details of the funeral arrangement will be released when they become available. And as I recall, after hearing um, about his death over five months ago, hearing it on the mainstream media, then there was nothing. No funeral coverage, nothing. Here in another article by the Guardian Express, Nelson Mandela life support shut down as respected humanitarian dies at age 94. Again, look at the date, June 26, 2013. The Nobel Prize winning humanitarian Nelson Mandela had his life support shut down after he died last night at age 94 at the end of a long battle with illness that ended with his hospitalization and finally his death. While his health problems started in 2011, it was the summer of this year when his condition worsened reported by CBS. On June 26, Nelson Mandela was taken off life support after his condition deteriorated further. Sources have said that the 94-year-old Mandela died last night after his life support was shut down. A medical source explained to us that no one is left on life support after 24 hours as they are then technically brain dead. And I'm, as I'm sure all of you know, that a frail 94-year-old man who is not breathing on his own but requires mechanical devices to keep him breathing, once he's disconnected from that, it's only a matter of hours before they succumb to death. This article goes on to say that in the hometown of Kunu, where Mandela was buried, or will be buried, they are repairing the roads and continue to clean up the city. Allegedly, they are expecting a large contingent of journalists who will be traveling down there. There is other evidence that points to Nelson Mandela having already died, like the presence of the red blanket, as I explained earlier. Mandela's daughter, who was seen wearing a red blanket, and other family members were at the great man's gravesite. It is part of the Zosa tradition that family members cover themselves with a red blanket when there's been a death in the family, not in preparation of someone dying, but only when a family member has died. I recommend that you guys go check these articles out for yourselves. And here I found another article, CBS News, the date, 
June 26, 2013, Nelson Mandela on life support. Here the article states that family members were observed inspecting a burial site in the area and CBS sources told Pata the meeting was called to resolve a bitter family feud over the removal of graves and other relatives from the site by Mandela's grandson. A lot of other information in this article. Again, I'll put links below. As I continued digging, I found dozens and dozens of news articles reporting Nelson Mandela's death on June 26th and June 27th of 2013, almost five months, over five months ago. And as I was digging, I came across this blog, a commentary on Nelson Mandela written by Atia Misoa, and I believe she lives in Botswana. But something that she said really caught my eye and really struck me here. And oh, the date of this post is June 10th, Monday, June 10th, 2013. And she says, although I am by no means hoping that Mandela will breathe his last breath soon, it will not surprise me in the least if his passing away is timed to occur precisely on a significant date because believe it or not such things can happen when your destiny is controlled by other powerful entities very insightful in light of the announcement once again of Mandela's death on December 5th and here we have a video of Obama giving a tribute to Nelson Mandela in Senegal. And look at the date, June 30th, 2013. I'll play a short clip of this, um, but the video, the audio is not very good in the video. I'm afraid it's a little choppy, so I'll put a link to it in the comments section below. So obviously our thoughts and prayers right now are with uh, the people of South Africa and more specifically the Mandela family. Uh, I will be traveling there uh, over the next uh, several days after I leave Senegal. Um, I had the privilege of meeting uh, Adiba and speaking to him, and uh, he's a personal hero, uh, but I don't think I'm unique in that regard. Uh, if none of the reports you've just seen raise an eyebrow, that there seems to be a massive event going on to reprogram our memories of recent historical events, this next clip might wake you up. Nelson Mandela, tribute, rest in peace, 1918 to 2013, Nobel Prize for Peace. I'll play a short clip of this tribute and I'll place a link below for you to go view it in its entirety yourself. Emancipation. We pledge ourselves to liberate all our people from the 
from the continued plunders of poverty, deprivation, suffering, gender, and other discrimination. We commit ourselves to the construction of a complete, just, and lasting peace. We understand it still that there is no easy road to freedom. We know it well that none of us acting alone can achieve success. We must therefore act together as a united people for national reconciliation, for nation building, for the birth of a new world. Did you hear that? For the birth of a new world, a new world order. Pretty nice tribute, huh? Except for this fact, and that is, this tribute was published on November 20th of 2013, nearly three weeks before the announcement on mainstream media that Nelson Mandela had died again. I think we should all be asking ourselves why. What is going on? Remember the very astute comment made by the blogger I pointed out earlier. She says it will not surprise me in the least if his passing away is timed to occur precisely on a significant date because believe it or not such things can happen when your destiny is controlled by other powerful entities. Very astute. So what else will be transpiring as a result of Nelson Mandela's redeath on December 5th? Well, first, we have M Nelson Mandela funeral is set for December 15th after 10 days of mourning. 10 days from December 5th is December 15th. It is being reported that 91 world leaders will gather in South Africa to attend Mel Nelson Mandela's funeral. His funeral is being billed as one of the largest gatherings of global leaders in recent history, representatives from around the world, prime ministers, religious leaders, dignitaries, kings, queens, from all over the world will be attending in one place on that date. What else do we know is happening around this same exact time? Well, Supposedly, if you're familiar with the gold and silver gates of the heavens that the ancients spoke about way back and before the time of the Mayans, um, the long count completes on December 16, 2013, or the Mayan date of 13-13-13. And it is at this time that it, the sun is in the golden gate of heaven and the moon is in the silver gate for a perfect astrological alignment. Now, let me explain this a little further here. On December 16th, the two gates, the gold and the silver gate, align with the moon and the sun. And that is supposedly the date at the end of the Mayan true calendar. The ancients universally accepted two portals or key dimensions into and out of the heavens. They were known as the Golden Gate and the Silver Gate. The Golden Gate was also known as the Gate of God and it was the entrance into the heavens. The Silver Gate was also known as the Son of Man. The Son of Man. I son? Don't know if there's a connection there. And was the exit out of the heavens. The Silver Gate's exact configuration is the constellation of Gemini and Taurus intersected by the galactic plane with the galactic equator around the horns of Taurus. Now I want to show you something also very interesting regarding the new Pope and his coat of arms. This is a picture of the Vatican coat of arms and as you see here there are two keys representing the two gates the golden gate of heaven and the silver gate of man and as you can see they are bound together here to each other in a configuration of a cross or a crossing and I'm going to try and explain this as best I can um, 
the ropes or the bindings here represent the crossing through the dimensions into the other side and on the silver side it represents the crossing through the dimension out of the other side and it talks about three portals through the gates here on the keys as you can see but I want to bring your attention to these dots here could these represent planetary alignments I don't know but I'm going to show you something very interesting in a video by Dabu7 and I'm going to put a link to his channel in the description box of this video below this is Dabu7 with an update to the December 16th Trinity that we found that took place between Venus, Earth, and Ison. Shout outs to base D77 <clears throat> for his work and a link which I will provide here. Um, as the update, as we look here at this exact distance being the exact same as Earth and Venus with Ison on this day, if you look from this particular angle directly above our galaxy here straight down onto the Sun and all the planets where you can see the perfect rotation from this particular view above in the heavens looking down on everything you get the perfect cross you can see it on the JPL as well for the same date you get the perfect cross when you add the Sun there it is you see it here are the points that are on the coat of arms for the Vatican just like in um, this video Dabu made using the JPL orbital diagram program interesting huh remember in the disaster movie 2012 Towards the end of the movie, they all were in the arcs, and the arcs were, after the disaster was over, headed towards South Africa, I believe, to meet up at the Cape of Good Hope, South Africa, where Nelson Mandela's funeral will be held. It's also interesting that the South African national flag first surfaced in the D Denver International Airport in a mural in 1993 known as the Yod Year. Yet shortly thereafter it was adopted as the national flag for South Africa in 1994. See here it is here and if we go back up to the mural here it is right here. And why has Jacob Zuma, the current president of South Africa, spent hundreds of millions of his own taxpayers' bases money to build himself a deep underground bunker or base? What information does he know that he's not sharing with his people? And I might add that a similar situation exists here with our own government spending hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars on these dumbs, these deep underground military bases, information that they possess that they are not inclined to share with us. And why was this man who had been on the U.S. terrorism watch list for decades removed in 2008 and why are all these people gathering in South Africa 91 world leaders hundreds of kings queens statesmen diplomats religious leaders from all over the world why are they all gathering in South Africa on December 15th for this man's funeral and I just want to leave you with this again Although I am by no means hoping that Mandela will breathe his last breath soon, I will not be surprised in the least if his passing away is timed to occur precisely on a significant date because, believe it or not, such things can happen when your destiny is controlled by other powerful entities. I think we should be watchful, and I think we could sh may consider that this may be a veil for the gathering of these leaders in one spot because they have knowledge or they may have knowledge 
that they are not inclined to share with us. I'd be interested in, in your thoughts on this. Please share your comments below. Thank you.